Nevertheless, WWE managed to pay her a bag of $25,000 just to read the attendance number that night. Jonathan Coachman told this story during an interview on ESPN Radio, and apparently she had a hard time remembering the number and needed a card. WrestleMania 27. She got paid 25 grand just to read what was on the card, re let people know what the attendance record was. That, man, give me 25 grand. I'm going to read that fucking card and like it's the best attendance number of all time. Hell, I may even make up a number. We got a broken attendance record of 100,000 people. Wait a minute. The stadium only holds 60,000. I know. It's crazy. We're fitting people everywhere. <laughs> What's good y'all, it's Will Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 30 minutes of shocking, but 100% true WWE WrestleMania facts. WrestleMania is tomorrow night one and then on Sunday night two. I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to see some of y'all during the uh, WrestleMania watch party we're having at the movie theaters this year. It's gonna be a great time. So it's only fitting to check out another Wrestle uh, WrestleMania related video and we're gonna check out some shocking uh, facts so, or some situations that we probably didn't know. If you did know, that's cool. If you didn't know about some of these situations or these factoids then you know this makes this video that much better because you learned something so we're gonna check this out should be a good one appreciate all love support man 30 minutes of some wrestlemania uh facts i'm all for it let's get right into this one man 30 minutes of the most shocking wrestlemania facts chris benoit was considered for a wrestlemania 11 role and heading into WrestleMania 11, WWE advertised that Owen Hart would receive a mystery partner. But there were various rumors Wait, being thrown what around. And Chris Benoit was considered for a WrestleMania 11 role. Oh, okay, and heading wow. into WrestleMania 11, WWE advertised that Owen Hart would receive a mystery partner. But there were various rumors being thrown around, and one of the names being considered was actually Chris Benoit. Wow. During an old edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Dave Meltzer reported they announced two more matches for Mania. Luger and Davey Boy Smith vs. Blue Brothers and Guns defending against Owen Hart and a mystery partner. No word on who it is, but do know that they are or were interested in it being Chris Benoit and shooting them immediately to the top of the tag team division. Damn. In the end, WWE opted to book Yokozuna as Hart's tag partner and the two embarked on a highly acclaimed run as a tag team combination. The original WrestleMania 29 main event. The original plans for WrestleMania 29 were always for The Rock to walk into WrestleMania as WWE Champion. However, instead of The Rock winning the WWE title from CM Punk at the 2013 Rumble, he would have won the title at that year's Elimination mm. Chamber event. Additionally, according to The Rock during a 2016 interview, the original plans for the main event of WrestleMania 29 were to see The Rock, John Cena and Punk collide in a triple threat oh, match. Wow. This is what fans as well as Punk were pushing for, but obviously Vince McMahon had other ideas oh. and decided to proceed with a rematch between The Rock and Cena. Fans were injured. Nah, bro. That match would have been so much better and it would have been a little bit more unpredictable. So you're telling me we could have got a John Cena, a CM Punk, and a Rock triple threat match? Oh, oh my God. That shit would have been fucking fire, bro. That shit would have been fire. Get WrestleMania 24. As this WrestleMania 24 was going off the air, The Undertaker was celebrating his world title win with tons of pyro, yet this particular pyro botched in a major way. It was reported at the time that fireworks landed in the proximity of a group of fans oh. and numerous fans were burnt and some were even taken to the local hospital. WWE were forced to issue a statement on the matter Damn. and they stated that they took solace in the fact that the injuries were minor. Vince McMahon loved the DX band. I wonder, I wonder how much if they did get sued. I wonder how much they tried to sue them for. That's the real question. WrestleMania 14. WrestleMania 14 kicked off with the DX band delivering a painful version of America the Beautiful. Although fans yeah. loathed this version of the song, it was actually said that Vince McMahon was rather fond of their involvement at that year's Mania. McMahon's positive opinion aside, this hasn't stopped WWE from editing the infamous performance of the <laughs> WWE Network that version sounds about of right. WrestleMania Vince 14. Hulk Hogan was told to leave the Ultimate Warrior alone at WrestleMania 30. 
Hmm? The Ultimate Warrior returned to WWE during WrestleMania 30 weekend and one legend was given strict instructions to leave him alone. Due to prior bad blood between Warrior and Hogan, Hogan was informed to stay away from him during the weekend. Damn. Yet this didn't stop Hogan as he proceeded to go up to Warrior backstage and make amends. This footage was captured by WWE cameras and it was used for various WWE network projects. The Undertaker was right. rushed to hospital. Hey man, that, that was that was a good gesture. Don't know if it was any, you know, if he meant what he said, but that was a good gesture. Because we, you know, it's been documented. Uh, Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior, they had some uh, some real life tension. Hell, Hulk Hogan had a lot of tension with a lot of people back in the day. Uh, even with some people to not, uh, as of now. So At WrestleMania 30, The Undertaker was in such a bad way following his WrestleMania 30 encounter I think I heard with about Brock this Lesnar I think a lot that of people the dead did. man was actually rushed to hospital. Uh -huh. Upon seeing one of his most trusted and loyal performers in this state, Vince McMahon decided to leave WrestleMania early and go to the hospital with the dead man. It's also said that Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman left the show early uh -huh. to be by the dead man's side. The referee... I believe because uh, he was concussed throughout the majority of that match, so... You know, I, I I think a lot of us heard about him having to be rushed to the hospital. Didn't know the streak was ending. A Brock Lesnar now, defeating this is crazy. the Undertaker and ending his iconic WrestleMania win streak shocked the world. Yeah. Nobody saw it coming, and one name in particular that didn't see it coming was the referee for the match, Chad Patton. It's a rule in WWE that if a wrestler doesn't kick out, they have to call the match as if it's legitimate. So when Lesnar hit an F5, the dead man didn't kick out, Patton called the match as if it was a shoot. Andre the That's Giant crazy. drank to excess before. Imagine you calling that that high profile match with the streak on the line and you're doing the one. You're doing the two. And you you about to commit to the three. You don't see no movement. And you hit the three and it's over. That's crazy. That's 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 a that's a lot of pressure on that particular, you know, scenario right there. Like you were the guy that counted the one, two, three uh, for the streak being ended. For WrestleMania three, WrestleMania three featured one of the most famous pro wrestling matches in existence as Hulk Hogan took on Andre the Giant. It's safe to say that Andre didn't go into the match in the best condition as I think according I heard to about Hogan, this too. Andre drank around two flasks of Crown Royal before the Jeez. match. Chris Benoit's celebration has been edited WrestleMania 20. Yep. The original version of WrestleMania 20 went off the air with Chris Benoit celebrating with his family. Yep. And due to Benoit's actions in 2007, WWE have since edited this out of the WWE Network version of the broadcast. The show now goes off the air with Benoit celebrating with Eddie Guerrero before posing on the turnbuckle. Uh -huh. Brock Lesnar almost... As we... Un I mean, yeah. Come on now. Yeah, that... Yeah. Definitely had to cut that out. Uh, edit that out. To squash Goldberg at WrestleMania 20. One of the most anticipated matches for WrestleMania 20 was Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar. Mm -hmm. WWE's plans for the match Damn, were simple. Hey, Due to Goldberg leaving WWE after other. Mania, Lesnar was going to outright squash him. However, oh, wow. when Lesnar also revealed to WWE that he planned on leaving the company, WWE opted for a new finish that resulted in Goldberg winning. Wow. Interestingly, the squash match formula for these two would be used 12 years later when yeah. Goldberg squashed Lesnar at the 2016 Survivor Series. Arnold Schwarzenegger that. passed on attending WrestleMania 3. Mm. Vince McMahon was intent on having major celebrity Arnold Schwarzenegger appear at WrestleMania 3. According to Jesse Ventura, Vince McMahon traveled in a private jet to the set of the movie Predator and offered an in-person invitation to Arnie. Arnold turned down the offer mainly due to things he'd been told by Jesse Ventura regarding McMahon and the company. Oh. The movie star would end up appearing in WWE a number of years later and even had a physical interaction mm -hmm. with Triple H in 1999. <laughs> John Cena drank three beers before his match at WrestleMania 34. A unique element of the early parts of WrestleMania 34 saw John Cena sit amongst the fans. Yeah. Cena was waiting to see if The Undertaker was going to show up for their match, and when Cena was sitting in the crowd, he began to drink beer, and according to the man himself, he drank around three beers before the actual match. No wonder why he was running up the ramp. Ken Shamrock... T <laughs> and it was all a waste of time, because Vince just thought it would have been funny that The Undertaker got in tip-top shape. To have a five-minute match. It was a waste of everybody's fucking time, bro.
turn down IWGP title reign to appear at WrestleMania 13. Oh. Just before Ken Shamrock made his WrestleMania debut at WrestleMania 13, Shamrock turned down a major IWGP title match in favor of a WWE and a WrestleMania payday. Damn. It's widely believed that New Japan Pro Wrestling would have put the top title in the promotion on Shamrock, but for Shamrock, he was laser focused on becoming a huge star in WWE. Yeah. Elias vs. John Cena was planned for WrestleMania 35. Oh, God. One of the most notable segments in WrestleMania 35 saw Elias get confronted by what? John Cena. This segment was extra special as Cena brought his classic Dr. Thugonomics persona for one night only. According to Elias himself in a 2024 interview at a UK wrestling convention, that wasn't the original plan. Elias stated that the original plans for WrestleMania 35 were to see him and Cena collide in a singles match on the grandest stage. Wow. John Cena has the most wrestle. That would have been crazy. It probably would have been a good moment for Elias better than what he ended up getting. That's why I was like, what? Oh, God, really? They were actually about to actually give him a match because like, they've only presented Elias as a fucking jobber since he's been there. An entertaining jobber. Nonetheless, with his concerts and stuff, but not to be taken seriously. WrestleMania title wins. John Cena has become a WrestleMania staple over the past two decades, and Cena holds the record for the most WrestleMania world title wins. Wow. Cena has won a total of four world titles on the grand stage. Okay. The first of these was at WrestleMania 21, then Cena picked up world title gold at WrestleMania 25, 26, and 29. WrestleMania 1 bad. suffered a major technical glitch. That's not bad at all. The inaugural WrestleMania event went out to 200 locations with an estimated 400,000 people watching. Unfortunately for the over 11,000 fans who traveled to the Civic Center to watch the show, they were unable to watch as a signal glitch meant that all they could see was a black screen. Oh, no. The fans in attendance were furious and it was said that things began to get violent. WWE would issue refunds and thankfully for them, the refunds didn't do too much damage to their revenue for the event itself. Oh yeah, back then, fans, they didn't play that shit. They didn't get what they deserved or they felt like they deserved or wanted. You was going Back then, people would riot. Now, uh most likely no. But back then, nah, people would riot over shit like that. Hulk Hogan still holds this impressive record. The legendary Hulk Hogan still holds the record for the most WrestleMania main events. Hogan has made events eight in total, yet as WrestleMania 40 approaches, this could all be about to change. Yep, it's gonna be if Roman. Roman wrestles both nights and main events both nights of Mania, yeah. he will officially take over Hogan's record. Which is insane. WrestleMania 9 was actually held in a parking lot. A WrestleMania 9 was advertised as taking place at the historic Caesars Palace. And this was partly true, yet WWE built a stage and set for WrestleMania 9 in the parking lot. This was one of the more unique sets That's WWE crazy. had delivered for WrestleMania, and the event was labeled as the world's largest toga party. WWE yeah, wanted <laughs> Bret Hart for WrestleMania 18. WWE initially wanted Bret Hart to return at WrestleMania 18 and play a key role in the main event. According to reports at the time, WWE wanted Hart to be the guest referee in the Chris Jericho vs. Triple H main event. It was said that Hart would have been booked in a spot where he would punch Vince McMahon. Hart yeah. turned down the opportunity and for good reason, as Hart returning in the main event match where Triple H of all people was winning would have been an odd and awkward moment. Yeah. WrestleMania's first ever double pin. Night 2 of WrestleMania 37 mm -hmm. was main evented by an acclaimed triple threat match. I didn't even realize this was the first time there was ever a double pin at WrestleMania. I never even realized that because you really don't see people double pinning like... <laughs> people like that it's a rarity that you see it this is like two jobbers versus one guy they're trying to push but that's interesting i i never really thought to even think about that roman reigns would defend his universal title against edge and daniel bryan and great reigns match. would retain the title when he stacked both edge and bryan and pinned them simultaneously great this match. was truly shocking and it marked the first ever wrestlemania match to end with a stacked double pin wrestlemania 16 only featured one singles match WrestleMania 16, or WrestleMania 2000 as it's often known as, only featured one singles match. Every match on the card featured more than two wrestlers, that is with the exception of the cat fight between Damn. Terry and the cat. It's unclear why WWE made this creative choice, yet WrestleMania 16 is the only WrestleMania event in company history to have just one 1v1 encounter. That's why Mankind vs. Vader almost happened at WrestleMania 13. Early plans for WrestleMania 13, according to McFoley, were to see him collide with Vader. 
this would have revisited their classic yeah. WCW rivalry, yet WWE unfortunately implemented Plan B and decided to team both men up for the show. The singles match would have been a welcome move as both men were mm -hmm. directionless heading into WrestleMania 13, and the feud was exactly what Vader needed to move back up the card. Zero titles changed hands at WrestleMania 27, oh, wow. and title changes are a key part of WrestleMania as fans yeah. love to see new champions crowned. However, when it comes to WrestleMania 27, they decided to have every champion on the show retain. <laughs> WrestleMania 27 is widely regarded as one of the most underwhelming WrestleMania events in oh, company history, sure. and it's easy to see why. For sure. WrestleMania 13 is the least bought WrestleMania in history. What? WWE were gradually finding a new core audience by the time WrestleMania 13 came around, yet this didn't translate to pay-per-view buys. The show, which was headlined by Sid vs. The Undertaker for the yeah. WWE title, only attracted 237,000 pay-per-view buys. That's worth noting that WrestleMania 4 was lower, but that particular show was on closed circuit. Whilst the WrestleMania 13 buy rate was insanely low, the following year was evidence that WWE had turned the corner. Uh -huh. WrestleMania 14, a pay-per-view that was headlined by two juggernauts in Shawn Michaels and Stone Cold, attracted over 700,000 pay-per-view buys. The Undertaker's... That's I don't, that's a lot of money for back time for a time period back then, like the nineties. That's that's a lot of money, bro. That's a lot of money they raked in on that. Wrestled show. and defeated every member of Evolution at WrestleMania. The Dead Man has wrestled numerous iconic names that, at WrestleMania. That makes sense too. Yet an interesting fact about his WrestleMania record is that the Dead Man has wrestled and defeated every member of the legendary stable yeah. Evolution. When it comes to Triple H, the dead man defeated him at WrestleMania 17, 27, yep. and 28. Yep. The Undertaker wrestled Ric Flair at WrestleMania 18, yep. Randy Orton at WrestleMania 21, and yep. finally he wow. competed against the animal <laughs> Batista at WrestleMania 20. He's beaten all of Evolution on the grandest stage of them all. That's why he's one of the GOATs, man. That's awesome. 23. Heath Slater's impressive battle royal record. The Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal has been a WrestleMania fixture for the past decade, and for the first six installments of the match, Heath Slater was in every single one, and he was what? the only <laughs> WWE star to be in the inaugural six. WrestleMania 6 Death Count <laughs> WrestleMania 6 is mostly known for the iconic main event showdown between the Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan, however it's also known for a rather morbid statistic. A huge number of legendary performers who performed on the show are no longer with us, these names include the likes of Andre the Giant and the oh, Ultimate Warrior. Damn. A total of 22 names that appeared on the show back in 1990 are sadly no longer with us. Damn. It took 36 WrestleMania events to have this gimmick match. The majority of WWE gimmick matches have been featured at WrestleMania events. But over the past 40 years, Ooh. the show has featured Hell in a Cell matches, TLC matches, and even a Boneyard match. Yeah. But when it comes to the Last Man Standing match, it took WWE until WrestleMania 36 to feature the match. Really? WWE would use the popular match stipulation for the showdown between Randy Orton and Edge. And due to the event taking place at the Performance Center, it made for a bizarre watch to say the very least. That's crazy. I never even thought about it. These are facts I didn't even, I wouldn't. You would never really honestly just think about it, but yeah. That's the only last man standing match we've seen at a WrestleMania. That's actually pretty interesting. Beast. Uh, interesting. Stone Cold Steve Austin never defended the WWE title at Mania. Stone Cold Steve Austin is widely regarded as one of the greatest WWE champions of all time. Facts. Yet a crazy fact about the Texas Rattlesnake is that he's never defended the top prize in WWE on the grandest stage. Every time Austin has competed in a WWE title match, he's walked in as the challenger. Oh. Austin's WWE title matches at WrestleMania include WrestleMania 14 vs Shawn Michaels and WrestleMania 15 and 17 vs The Rock. Mm -hmm. Triple H has the most WrestleMania losses. Damn! Our fans are always stunned to discover that Triple H has the most Mania losses out of anyone in the company history with 13. Triple Jeez. H has always had the notion attached to him during his full-time run that he used his backstage influence to bury talent. But when it comes to WrestleMania events, that's yeah. simply not true. Over the years, the game has put over names including The Undertaker, Batista, John uh -huh. Cena, Roman Reigns, and Seth Rollins. Yeah. Randy Orton and John Cena have never had a 1v1 match at Mania. A Randy Orton versus John Cena. Which, which is really crazy when you think about it. You would think they would have at least had a one-on-one. -on -one. They've, they've never had it and they're like, arguably, you could say their greatest rivals, character-wise. is one of the most celebrated feuds in WWE history. Yet one key fact about the notable rivalry is that they've never had a singles match at WrestleMania. 
The closest the two legends got to colliding 1v1 was at WrestleMania 24, yet WWE added Triple H into the mix. Mm -hmm. There was a strong belief at the time that this should have been a standard singles match between Orton and Cena, yet WWE clearly believed that the game's inclusion was the right move. All hope isn't lost as both men have admitted how awesome it would be to collide in a singles match at WrestleMania. That would be at cool. the start of 2024, this is what Orton had to say regarding a potential singles match during an appearance on the bump. That would be cool. A dream match for me would be somehow to find myself in a situation where I'm fighting Cena at WrestleMania yes. for the title. I don't know how you get there, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I have never wrestled John at WrestleMania in a singles match. We had some wars back in the day, so being able to revisit that after all this, I think it's not only something that I would want, I think the fans would eat it up too. Facts, if it was, if it happened to be John Cena's very last match, I don't think anyone would trip. I don't think anyone would trip. If they ever found a way to make that legitimately happen, Randy Orton versus John Cena, he didn't even have to be for the title. Just one more time at WrestleMania, I don't think anybody would complain. I know I wouldn't. Rob Van Dam is undefeated at WrestleMania. Think, WWE I Hall of I'm, Famer Rob Van Dam is this. undefeated on heard the about grandest this. stage. RVD has won four matches at WrestleMania, including picking up a big win over William Regal and helping Team ECW. That's crazy, my breed. man is RVD undefeated. RVD did suffer a loss during the pre-show at WrestleMania 19, yet WWE don't count the Sunday Night Heat portion of the prior WrestleMania events as canon. Yeah. Other big names to be undefeated at WrestleMania include Demolition, Sable, Legion of Doom, Virgil, Mr. T, and yeah, even Michael Cole. The Undertaker's brother passed away before his final match. When The Undertaker was filming his match with AJ Styles in a Boneyard match at WrestleMania 36, during filming, he learned that his brother Timothy had died of a heart attack. Oh, Taker shit. received a call on the set from his niece, who told him the very tragic news. Nevertheless, Undertaker still managed to finish the filming of the match. Wow. Wrestle I did not know that either. Oh man. That's a piece to his brother. That's, that's tough, bro. Imagine you getting some tough news like that. And then you still have to finish the job, still finish filming and everything. That's, that's tough, bro. That's, that's tough. I don't even know what to, I don't, I can't even fathom continuing doing what I'm doing. If I lose someone so, so close to you, a family member like that, or a friend like that's, that's crazy. WrestleMania 4 holds the record for the most matches. Oh Lord. WrestleMania 4, which featured Macho Man Randy Savage becoming WWE Champion, holds the record for the most matches in a single day at WrestleMania with 16 in total. The card was Damn. truly stacked, and this was predominantly down to WWE holding a tournament to crown a new WWE Champion. Speaking of oh. Savage, he competed in four matches on the show, giving him the record for the most WrestleMania matches on a single broadcast. Damn, 16? The first ever submission victory in a WrestleMania main event took place at WrestleMania 20. It took 20 years to book a WrestleMania main event to end via a submission. This came at WrestleMania yep. 20 when Chris Benoit tapped out Triple H to become the new world champion. Submission finishes in the main event would become much more common following Benoit's win as names such as John Cena and Daniel uh -huh. Bryan won main event matches with their respective finishers. These huge names have never won at WrestleMania. Winning at a WrestleMania event should be one of the highlights of a wrestler's career. Yet unfortunately, some wrestlers never receive the honor. Names including Goldust, Shinsuke Nakamura, Asuka, yeah. the Dudley Boys, William Regal, Wade Barrett, and R-Truth have competed at several WrestleMania events. Hopefully the R-Truth one gets rectified this weekend. Put the titles on R-Truth, the tag titles on R-Truth in the Miz. Let's go. Give them that moment and they've never come out with the W. Now for Asuka, Nakamura and Truth, due to them being still active in WWE, there is still hopefully a chance they could pick up a win at WrestleMania yeah, Asuka's definitely not winning themselves this from weekend. this unfortunate statistic. It's, it's not Triple happening. H almost boxed at WrestleMania 17. Before Triple H was paired with The Undertaker for WrestleMania 17, WWE had two ideas in mind for the game. One idea was for the game to face Ray Lewis, and this match could have also included Warren Sapp. Huh? The Rock of All People offered a great account on the WWE's plans during an interview with Dan Patrick. There was a time where we were actually recruiting both guys, Lewis and Warren Sapp, to come in and have a big match. And we got them very close in having a big match, bringing in Ray Lewis. And we were going to have a big tag team match with myself, Ray Lewis as tag team partners against whoever the top heels were at the time. Probably Triple H, I think, and somebody else. I it was going to be a big wow. WrestleMania match, but we could never. It had nothing to do with the creative, just more so scheduling. 
but we were very, very excited, so we came very close to that. But both of these guys would have done great in the ring, and just really, really exceptional athletes. The that other idea was for Triple H to box Mike Tyson, and the fight would have been six rounds. But according to the game, due to Tyson's costly asking price, the plans were scrapped. There have only been two cage matches in wrestling. No. And I'm glad Mike Tyson was had a, a large demanding price. No. You would have killed him. No. Boxing and wrestling don't know. No. They've tried it before and people were legit getting CTE cases out there. No. Just no. I'm glad that didn't happen. That that sounds awful. <laughs> WrestleMania history. Despite the steel cage match being one of the most commonly used gimmick matches in WWE, it's only been featured twice at WrestleMania. The first time came when Hulk Hogan collided with King Kong Bundy at WrestleMania 2, then 30 years later at WrestleMania 37, Braun Strowman would take on Shane McMahon. Only two people have main evented every WrestleMania they've competed at. A main eventing WrestleMania is an honor that only a select few wrestlers uh -huh. have attained, but for two wrestlers, they managed to main event every WrestleMania they competed in. Lawrence Taylor competed in one WrestleMania in the That's main event crazy. slot, and that was WrestleMania 11 versus Bam Bam Bigelow. The second name is Sid, whose matches versus Hulk Hogan and The Undertaker were both given the main event placement uh -huh. on the respective shows. John Cena was the first person to point at the WrestleMania sign. Really? Wrestlers pointing towards the WrestleMania sign is a common practice for the Royal Rumble winner. Yet the crazy thing about the tradition is that it only started in 2008. Wow. John Cena was the first person to deliver the triumphant point, and it became custom that every year the Rumble winner would point towards the WrestleMania I ain't sign. No, as Pyro would I ain't no my boy John was a pioneer of that shit. I, I just never really paid attention to it. I just remember people, I just people doing it now but i never really thought who was the first person to do it that's a lot of these is like stats and facts you don't even really be thinking of until someone says it that's crazy at the arena <laughs> or stadium the undertaker is main evented wrestlemania in four different decades yep i know about now, this one back in the 90s undertaker took on psycho sid at wrestlemania 13 in 1997 in the 2000s the undertaker versus batista and undertaker versus edge at wrestlemania 23 and 24 respectively 2010s undertaker versus Shawn michaels and uh -huh. undertaker versus roman reigns at wrestlemania 25 26 and 33 respectively and in the 2020s of undertaker versus aj styles at wrestlemania yep. 36 Kurt Angle and Sting almost wrestled at WrestleMania 18. What? Kurt Angle took on Kane at WrestleMania 18, and whilst Kane isn't exactly a mid-carder, it didn't feel like the feud came out of nowhere, and Angle was destined for a bigger spot. It turned out that WWE wanted Angle to either face Sting or Bret Hart, and if Sting came into the company, this would have marked Sting's official debut wow. in the WWE. Angle would discuss these early creative pitches during a 2021 edition of his podcast. Yeah, there were talks about it. I heard about it. But I'm not surprised that it didn't occur, you know. They couldn't get Sting to sign that early, you know. Bret Hart at that particular time, you know, he was still wrestling. I did contact Bret. I'm the one that contacted him, yeah. I called him and said, hey, I want you to wrestle at WrestleMania. I think it would be a dream match. Wow. You don't have to do any of the work. I'll do all the bumping and selling. And he immediately said no. I was like, okay, well, I appreciate it. Nice meeting you, Bret. <laughs> Cameo Mania. Damn, that nigga said no. <laughs> I can see Kurt being excited and then on the other end, Brett's just like, no. That would have been a, a very interesting match. That would have been interesting. Brett versus Kurt or uh, Kurt versus Steen, that would have been interesting. But Brett, he said, no, fuck no. I'm not doing that shit. <laughs> yeah. WrestleMania <laughs> over the years has been prone to delivering cameos from future main event level talent. Uh -huh. Take, for instance, future WCW World Champion DDP would be the driver at WrestleMania 6. What? CM Punk will portray a yep. gangster at WrestleMania 22. And at WrestleMania 30, names including Charlotte Flair, Sasha Banks, and Alexa Bliss played uh -huh. a pivotal role in Triple H's special entrance. Mm -hmm. The Undertaker often used future WWE talent for his special entrances. And for his entrance at WrestleMania 21, one of the Druids just so happened to be future WWE champion. Champion, Kofi Kingston. Wow, WWE that's planned tough. Hulk Hogan versus Zeus for WrestleMania 6. Original plans for WrestleMania 6 were to see Hulk Hogan take on Zeus. According to Tom Lister Jr., these plans were scrapped when Hogan refused to drop the title to him, and as a result, <laughs> the main event of the show was changed, and the Ultimate Warrior would enter the proceedings. Ultimately, this was the right move, as although Warrior was limited in the ring, he was insanely over. Mm -hmm. Hogan vs. Zeus could have been one of the worst main events yeah. in WrestleMania history. 
Tatanka has had the biggest gap between wrestling at WrestleMania. Tatanka randomly returned to WWE for a one-off appearance mm -hmm. at WrestleMania 32. He would appear in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, and this appearance marked 23 years <laughs> since he last appeared Jeez. on the grandest stage, giving him the biggest gap between WrestleMania matches. Ricky Steamboat does come close, but only with 21 years. Still crazy. WrestleMania 7 had to move location. WrestleMania attendance always leads to a ton of discourse, particularly on social media. Uh -huh. Thankfully for WWE, social media wasn't a thing when WrestleMania 7 delivered the lowest attended WrestleMania event of all time. Just over 16,000 fans wow. attended the show headlined by Sergeant Slaughter vs. Hulk Hogan. And the crazy thing about the show is that it almost occurred in a big stadium. WWE Ooh. moved the show to a smaller arena due to poor ticket sales, and yeah. to save face, they embarrassingly claimed that it was due to a bomb scare. WrestleMania 7 was indeed the lowest attended <laughs> WrestleMania, but that was until 20. This nigga said, a bomb scare, bro. <laughs> they were definitely playing face. <laughs> Oh no, it was a bomb scare, so we had to downsize. Okay. Okay, Vince. 2020, when they were forced to host WrestleMania 36 at the WWE Performance Center in front of zero fans. Yeah. Snoop Dogg has won more matches at WrestleMania than Asuka. One of the most. Just saying that stat out loud is kind of fucking wild. And I love Snoop Dogg. I think Snoop Dogg's great. It's just the fact that Asuka doesn't have a win at WrestleMania. And the trend is going to keep going on. She's not winning in that tag match they have or that uh, three three on three match they have this year. She's not winning. The The trend is going to continue on. That's crazy. The most disappointing elements of Asuka's That's main so roster crazy. run is that she has yet to win at WrestleMania. Asuka has lost every single match she's competed in on the grandest stage, and even Snoop Dogg has won more matches at WrestleMania than the Empress of Tomorrow. Hell, even count Snooki in that. Yeah. She's even won at WrestleMania. WWE wanted Abyss to face The Undertaker at WrestleMania 23. In 2006, when Abyss's TNA contract was set to expire, WWE offered Abyss a lucrative contract that would have included mm. a WrestleMania match with The Undertaker. Ooh. Shockingly, Abyss turned down the offer and decided to stay with TNA. When this news surfaced, fans were ultimately let down as Abyss was incredible in the ring, and he and the dead man would have had a tremendous chemistry in the squared circle. That would have been in crazy. relation to Abyss's take on this decision years later, during a Reddit AMA, he revealed that he had no regrets regarding turning the match down. Yes, that's true, I ended up staying with TNA, and I'm so happy that I did. I have no regrets. I was an okay. original member of TNA since the beginning, and I couldn't leave something I helped build from the ground up. Hey. Abyss would eventually find himself in WWE years later, yeah. but not as an in-ring talent. For the past several years, the TNA Hall of Famer has worked as a producer in WWE, a role in which he received widespread praise for. And it's just one of those things where he's like, you know what? That's... I can respect a person's decision to do what's best for them, even if everyone else were like, oh man, that's you turning out so much money and big opportunities to really get your name out there. Nah, I'm going to stay where I'm at. And he still ended up there, but he's out here producing good, great matches. So he's working behind the scenes and it, it still worked. It came full circle. It's just not on camera, but still producing stuff that we love on camera. So I can respect that, bro. WrestleMania 2 took place on a Monday. What? Traditionally, WrestleMania events have taken place on a Sunday, but that is until the past several years where WWE have decided that WrestleMania should be a two-night showcase. Bizarrely for WrestleMania 2, Vince McMahon decided to book the show to take place on a Monday. This was an odd move that made a little business sense. Yeah. McMahon realized the error of his ways the following year as WrestleMania would revert to the Sunday slot. Why on a Vince Monday? McMahon wanted Vladimir Kozlov to break the streak. Yep, I Between heard about this. Between 2008 to 2009, Vince McMahon was insistent on Vladimir Kozlov being a major player in the company. Unfortunately for McMahon, the fans never connected with Kozlov, and no. despite this, McMahon had a crazy idea that would see Kozlov in The Undertaker's WrestleMania uh -huh. win streak. This was going to be at WrestleMania 25, Good. and the backlash oh if McMahon God. proceeded with this booking move would have been insane. But thankfully, McMahon came to his senses, and yep. instead of booking Kozlov versus the dead man for WrestleMania 25, he opted for Shawn Michaels versus yes. The Undertaker, which resulted in an all time classic. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Thank the, the stars and the heavens above. I've heard about this story and it still gives me chills to even think that that old man was thinking about putting that damn match on and having him beat the streak in replace of this. Oh, good God. Whoo. 
Stone Cold Steve Austin was rushed to hospital before WrestleMania 19. Yep, heard about but this Stone Cold one. Steve Austin was set to retire at WrestleMania 19, yet the night before the final match of his iconic career, Austin found himself in hospital. Austin had run himself into the ground and the former WWE Champion revealed in his autobiography that he thought he was having a heart attack. Jeez. My heartbeat might be doing 160 or 180 beats per minute. It just feels like my heart's gonna jump out of my chest. I've been fatigued in matches before, totally out of gas and winded, but this was scaring the hell out of me. I'm sure I'm having a heart attack. According to Austin's close friend Jim Ross on Grill and JR, Austin was overtraining and become reliant on energy drinks. Mm. Well, it was scary. So, you know, he felt like he was letting a lot of people down and he was overtraining and those damn energy drinks. Steve was not sleeping, he was over caffeinating mm -hmm. himself, and his body reacted by just backing away. So when we all went to bed on Saturday night, in the middle of the night, we didn't know if he was going to be able to wrestle Rock or not in the main event. Austin pushed through and he was yeah. able to retire in a fantastic match against his arch rival, The Rock. Fantastic, and I, I hope we get to see at least them face off a little bit of interaction this weekend man but nah this that was a fantastic way to end off a legendary career with one of the legendary feuds of wrestling is it was just cinema <laughs> the undertaker refused to let this wrestler break the streak the wwe shocked the world at wrestlemania 30 when brock lesnar defeated taker and the illustrious streak at wrestlemania 30 However, the streak was going to be broken much earlier. On an episode of Something to Wrestle With with Bruce Pritchard, Bruce said that Vince McMahon called him one day and told him that he wanted Mark Henry what? to end the streak at WrestleMania. Upon hearing this, Bruce made sure to let Undertaker know what the plans were. But both Bruce Pritchard and Undertaker were unhappy with this decision, with Bruce saying that he didn't feel like Mark Henry was ready just yet and that there weren't any long-term plans for Mark Henry. Yeah. Undertaker being the man that he is, even though he didn't like the plans, he said that if that's what the boss wants, he'll follow the instructions. Wow. Of course, Mark Henry didn't end a streak and Undertaker defeated him, keeping the streak intact. The Big Show wanted to have a reverse Undertaker. Bruh, this is why Undertaker is the GOAT. He, he was still going to do the job. Like, if that's what he wants, I'll do it. He disagreed, but if that's what he wants, I'll do it, bro. Take a record at WrestleMania. The Undertaker's WrestleMania streak is legendary in the world of wrestling. Taker would go all the way to WrestleMania 30 undefeated, ranking up 21 wins in a row. Of course, it ended with Brock Lesnar defeating Taker and ending the streak. However, instead of a win streak at WrestleMania, The Big Show pitched the idea that he wanted to do a reverse streak of losses. Jeez, he mentioned, I've uh, always prided myself on doing what really was best for business. The only time I had an ego is when I wanted to have a reverse Undertaker record at WrestleMania and they messed it up. <laughs> I was like Norton 6 and they let me win one. Imagine being Norton 22 all time. Kim yeah. I don't know. I, I, I get what he's saying, but I'm I'm glad that didn't happen. The big show don't deserve that, bro. I come on, man. Make <laughs> your big ass should not be out there taking L's <laughs> 22 years in a row. Nah, bro. You you're better than that. <laughs> Kardashian was paid this much to read the attendance at WrestleMania 24. Wait. Kim Kardashian wasn't really a celebrity that was needed at WrestleMania 24. No. Nevertheless, WWE managed to pay her a bag of $25,000 just to read the attendance number that night. Jonathan what? Coachman told this story during an interview on ESPN Radio, and apparently she had a hard time remembering the number and needed a card. WrestleMania 27. She got paid 25 grand just to read what was on the card, re let people know what the attendance record was. That... Man, give me 25 grand. I'm going to read that fucking card and like it's the best attendance number of all time. Hell, I may even make up a number. We got a broken attendance record of 100,000 people. Wait a minute. The stadium only holds 60,000. I know. It's crazy. We're fitting people everywhere. <laughs> now, give me my damn check. Give me my money is the oldest WrestleMania where all the competitors on the card are still alive today. Oh. WrestleMania 26 was the oldest until Shad Gaspard passed away as Rest he was peace. part of the Battle Royal. If you look at WrestleMania 25, Jimmy Snooker and Roddy Piper are no longer with us. Yeah. WrestleMania 24 had Umaga on the card. WrestleMania 23 had Chris Benoit and Umaga on the card. WrestleMania 22 had Fissura and Chris Benoit. Yeah. WrestleMania 21 had Eddie Guerrero mm -hmm. and so forth. 
Roman Reigns is the only member of the Anawahi family to face The Undertaker at WrestleMania. That's crazy. Roman Reigns was the first and only member of the Anawahi family to face The Undertaker at WrestleMania. This match came in the main event of WrestleMania 33, and this fact comes as a huge surprise, especially when you consider that the dead man has had epic feuds with members of the family, yeah. including The Rock, Yokozuna, and Rikishi. Mm -hmm. The match between Reigns and the dead man was initially designed to be The Undertaker's final match in mm -hmm. WWE, yet due to the poor quality on offer, The Undertaker decided to have numerous more matches in WWE before retiring at WrestleMania 36 against AJ Styles, riding off into the sunset. But there you have it, folks. 30 wow, minutes of man. shocking. This was, this was a good one. I, I like videos like this. Get into like facts that you may have heard about or facts you didn't even know was a thing. Like, never knew John Cena was the one to start the whole pointing at the WrestleMania sign. Didn't even know that. <laughs> Wasn't even thinking of that. Or that uh, Roman was the first guy to ever do the stack pin at WrestleMania. Didn't know that. So this was this was very informative. Get you hyped up for WrestleMania. The question is, what's gonna happen at WrestleMania that will live on in infamy for this weekend? Looking forward to it. Can't wait to check it out, man. Ah, it's crazy to say WrestleMania 40 is right here. We it, the time is flying by so quick. I love it. But comment down below. Let me know which fact from this video was the most shocking to you that you did not know. But I appreciate all love and support. Road to 150K, and I'm seeing you on Speed, the YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See you on the next one. Peace.